All right, happy Sabbath again, everyone. My Zoom family. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. Tan. <laughs> Yes, I'm hearing. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, Sister B, and those on Zoom who are hearing. Right? We're going to resume now with our divine service, and we're going to have a hymn and call it Day's Offering. Oh, we have, okay, I see Elder Keneal down for the meditation song, followed by the tithes and offering. Elder Keneal? Okay. Go ahead, Elder, can you? Yes, I'm about to do it now. Can you hear me OK? Yes, sir. OK. Okay, great. All right. So I'll be singing hymn number 522. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest spring, but wholly lean. On Jesus' name, when darkness seems to veil his face, I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale. My anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of around is sinking sand. All of around is sinking sand. His oath is covenant and his blood. Support me in the whelming flood, and when all around my soul gives away, even is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, 
that in his righteousness alone for less to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is Sinking sand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Amen. Say no to preparation, I'll sing as them all. Amen. Great. Thank you so much, Ella. Can you? Such a lovely voice. Sounds so professional. All right, we're going to have our tithes and offering. And see how our deacon is here now. I'm going to sing a hymn and call it these offering. <laughs> Have a hymn suggestion? Hmm? Is that a hymn? Are we going to sing The Windows of Heaven Are Open and our gentleman here will call it the offering, tithes and offering? I don't feel about it. The windows of heaven are open. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. All right, let's get it under. I'm taking my legs up here. The windows of heaven are open. The fire is falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart. Since Jesus made everything right, I gave him my old dirty garment. He gave me a robe of pure life. And now I am feasting on manna. And that's why I'm happy tonight. The windows of heaven are open. The fire is falling tonight. I've got joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old daughter garment. He gave me a robe of pure light. And night may not matter, matter. And that's why I'm happy tonight. Oh, the windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling to me. And joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garments. He gave me a row of your life. I'm feeling on heavenly matter. And that's why I'm happy today. All right, back over to you. I hope that was long enough.
to Sashua. Thank you so much, Elder Keneal. So we know the professional singers, eh? All right, so we're going to have our little deacon to pray for the offering. Not your time, sweetheart. It's that brother time. Okay? Then your time to go. Here it is, sir. Dear God. I thank you that I did all the offering. Please forgive for some of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Josiah. Oh. All right. So we will continue with our program. And we have the intercessor prior by brother wallace i don't he's on i'm gonna ask huh? i'm on oh okay <laughs> they're right. here okay all right let us pray Our righteous and eternal Father in the heavens, hallowed be thy gracious and precious name. We want to thank you so much, O oh Lord, for this moment. We want to thank you so much for the Sabbath day. We thank you for sparing our lives once more, taking us to another week, and uh, caused us to uh, see this beautiful day. This special time, O oh Lord, we want to put the speaker before you. You know him, dear Lord. You know everything about him. You know his uh, ups and downs. You know all the things that he struggles with. But dear Lord, I pray, O oh Father, that your Holy Spirit will be upon him and that you will help him, dear Lord, to have faith and learn how to trust in thee and that you will Help him to be strong and courageous for thee in all things. Strengthen him. And I pray, O oh Father, in a very special way that whatever he has to say, you will cause it to be mingled with your spirit. And so that it, as it will be received into the hearts of the people, those who are listening locally, those who are abroad, that they will be blessed, dear Lord. They will be encouraged. They will have the urge to make a transformation in regards to what will be said. I pray, oh Father, that every word that will be uttered will be of thee and that you will help us, oh Father, to live by every word that comes out of your mouth. So bless him as we put him before you Hide him behind the cross so that he will not be seen, but Christ through him will be seen and heard. Bless him and his family and provide for them continually. And I pray once more, oh, oh, Father, that wherever those are or wherever the visitors may be and those that are listening who may be affected in some way or the other, that they will be comforted by the words and whatever he has to share, especially for those who are mourning in the land, those who are affected by the distress of life. Pray, O oh Father, that you will shield him and keep him 
And I pray, O oh Father, that we will have the great desire to be converted unto thee. We will be willing, O oh Father, to not let a, another year by your grace come upon us and we remain the same. Keep us now and forgive us all of our sins and transgressions. We beg of you, please, blot them out, out of your book more so, so that we may be found sinless in your eyes. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. And amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Brother Wallace. We're going to continue with our program. And we have the introduction of the speaker. So the speaker is no stranger to us. My sister Kane. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, uh, good so, as Sister Kane started, Thank you, Sister King. He's indeed not a stranger to us. Um, which is Elder Nelson, a person who loves God, gives good advices, and also loves to contend for the faith. But be careful. He asks a lot of provocative questions. But don't worry. It is just to keep you on track. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, let us pray in our hearts as Elder Nelson comes to us with the word of God. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you so much, Sister Tamara. I'm sure nobody would have said it better because I would probably say something <laughs> that would cause an uproar. All right, so before our Dear Elder comes to us, we're going to stand and sing a hymn of meditation. So please stand. Hymn 654, an old hymnal, Holy Day Jehovah's Rest. Hymn six five four in the old hymnal, all the day Jehovah's rest. Ready? Holy day Jehovah's rest of creations, we the best. Last of all the chosen seven, blessed of God to man was given. Welcome, 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 welcome. Glad we hear its presence bless. Tis the great Jehovah's rest. First his six days work was done, then the Sabbath was begun. Thus he blessed the seventh day, thus in rest did we obey. Welcome, 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 welcome. Glad we hail its presence blessed. Tis the great Jehovah's rest. Thousands have 
have his plans reversed, rest in the upon the first. Search the book and you shall know, there's no scriptures tell them so. Welcome, 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 welcome. Glad we hear his presence bless. Tis the great Jehovah's rest. All who speak the truth must say. It was man who changed the day. In God's word, no change appears through the whole six thousand years. Welcome, 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 welcome. Glad we hail its prayer. Bless, tis the great Jehovah's rest. Thus I search, and when I saw only one great Sabbath law, then I hastened to obey. Plainly, it was the only way. Welcome, 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 welcome. Glad we hail its presence bless. Tis the great Jehovah's rest. Amen. You may be seated. We now have our speaker come to us. Please bow your head with me for a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, again we give you thanks, Lord, for your manifold blessings, for having taken us from all the cares and the stresses of the six days of toil and labor, and you have brought us into your court, where we are gathered here to worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask kindly for your divine presence to remain and abide with us. Touch our minds and help, Lord, that our minds will be able to bring back that which we have studied, and not only that which we have studied, but that it will be fixated upon you. Bless and keep us all, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, one and all. It is indeed... A blessing to be alive and to be in the house of God. I want to thank um, Brother Keneal for his lovely singing. I want to also thank Camera. Oh. What happened to that? Oh, sorry. Yes, I was instructed that I need to turn on the camera. All right. Yes, thank um, Brother Keneal um, for his singing and also Sister Wallace for her words of introduction. Happy Sabbath and welcome one and all. Are you hearing me clearly? Yes, but I, oh, I'm just seeing you now. Yes. Happy okay. Sabbath. Yes. Yes. So, welcome. The, the filter or the, the screen protective camera, camera, camera was locked. So, I activated the video, but it was not sure. <laughs> right. So, I just opened the lid. 
just as we speak. So again, happy Sabbath. I just want us to, to us all to be reminded of something, right? Us all, everybody here is included. This is not my presentation, but I'm going to remind us all. And I believe that it is very important for us. And this is our behavior in the house of God. That's one song the is for. You can give the words to the Lord. That's one song. Oh, so I don't know who that is. All right, thank you for fixing that. Our behavior in the house of God. Just a few slides here. I want you to go with me to this one. To the humble, are we humble? To the humble believing soul, the house of God on earth is the gate of heaven. The song of praise, the prayer, the words spoken by Christ, representatives are God's appointed agencies to prepare a people for the church above. For that loftier worship into which they can enter nothing that what? Defile it. Nothing that defile it. From the sacredness which was attached to the earthly sanctuary, Christians may learn Oh, they should regard the place where the Lord meets with his people. That is very important. Where the Lord meets. And I may just stop right here. Many of us, we are familiar with meetings. Meetings either on a secular level, a corporate level, and also from a judiciary standpoint. Whenever we enter these places, there is a requirement in how we conduct ourselves. The God of heaven is much bigger than any earthly establishment. Why is he treated less? I want us all to contemplate that. Notice I'm saying all, not pointing any fingers. We all, I myself, is also guilty but we need to lift our standards a little higher when it comes on to worshiping the true and living god we may i do believe that we have the truth but the truth and our behavior doesn't match and we need to check ourselves there has been a great change not for the better but for the worse in the habits and the customs of the people in reference to religious worship. The precious, the sacred, the sacred things which connect us with God are fast losing their hold upon our minds and hearts and are being brought down to what? Common things. How we behave on a regular basis, the same attitude has been brought in the church. And there must be a change for the better. The reverence which the people have had anciently for the sanctuary, sanctuary where they met with God in sacred service has largely passed away. Nevertheless, God himself gave the order of his service, exalting it high above everything of a temporal nature. My right, testimony. Page 491, page 2. I hope we think seriously on these few slides. All right, with that said, I want to resume 
where I have left off last week, I was not supposed to be the speaker or the presenter for this afternoon. Coincidentally, one person was basically scheduled to be in both places at the same time. And that is Brother Ward. He was slated to be here and also be in uh, St. Elizabeth. And uh, um, when Pastor brought it to me, I said, okay, I'll just fit in and it said, okay. So here, that is the reason why I am the person slated now to deliver the message. And I want us to remember where we have been. We have been looking at the first and second commandment, showing that how oh, you can actually see the mark of the beast from here in Exodus chapter 20, reading from 1 to 6. Exodus 20, 1 to 6. And we have looked at idol and idolatry. Am I right? We remember exactly where we left off. Anyone? None remember? Carvings and pain. Yeah. Okay, okay. Would have you would okay. We we basically were looking at the examination of the commandments. The commandments as it relates to how God said that you should not create or make, make images, right? And we have compared them and we have shown several relations in with regards to them. We have gone through um, the statement and I'm going to, for our sakes now, look at some, a very important point in when the popes makes the statement that when the question was asked why do we meaning catholics observe sunday instead of saturday and they have made a statement for which i've captioned this transferring or transferred the solemnity from sabbath to sunday I want us to, to, let me just share my screen because I want you to see it. And I believe that so whether or not it is coincidental or not, it is very important as to why these words were chosen to be a part of the definition of solemnity. But before that, let me just share my screen so you all can see. So Peter German, right, who wrote the Converts Catechism of Catholic Doctrine on page 1957 and page 50, the question was asked, why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Are we seeing it on the screen? And the answer came, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. And you can look up in your dictionary, but in the Webster's dictionary here, when you look up solemnity, it is a noun, and it's, it says the formal or ceremonial observance of an occasion or event. Now, when you look up solemn, which is an adjective, it describes something else and it says it says this marked by the invocation of religious sanction it is marked by observance of established form or ceremony marked by grave what sedatedness and uh, the last definition in light of 
the PowerPoint slide is very important. So datedness, quietness. Yes, you can pronounce it for me. <laughs> right? Right. Very important. Now, with this definition or the understanding of this definition, we will clearly understand the reason why the Catholic Church feels justified in using biblical scriptures as pertaining to the seventh day Sabbath justifying Sunday. Because all the scriptures, when you look at their writing, invalidating their reason for keeping Sunday, all comes from the Bible, which pertains to the seventh day Sabbath. But they have said what they have said, they have transferred what? The solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. We could just basically end it right there. We don't need to go any further. But we're going to see how all this has played through history and everything. All right? We have gone through most of this last week, but I've just put this def new definition. Oh, let me just stop sharing my screen now. Stop share. Also, um, when we were looking at the Lord's Day, Revelation 1 and verse 10, just a brief recap. Revelation 1, 10, we look at Matthew 12, verse 8, and we look at Mark 2, 28, and also Luke chapter 6. These are the reference with the closest phrase you can find, not necessarily a phrase because there are, there are words in between, but a sentence which in, um, captures Lord and Sabbath, right? Where Jesus says, he, the Son of Man is even Lord of the Sabbath day, right? You don't find outside, outside of Revelation 1 and verse 10, you don't find a direct phrase, the Lord's day. Right, but you can also do another search. Turn to your Bible, get your concordance and your and the your Bible app on your phone, and you can type in my Sabbath. And when you look through all those references that you'll find, all of them turns or points to the seventh day Sabbath. But again, if the Catholic Church has transferred the solemnity, the rights to. They within themselves are free to do as they have indicated because they claim that they have transferred it. Now, importantly, in uh, in Exodus, let us go there again, Exodus 20, verse 4, reading to verse 6, it says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to serve them, to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord, thy God, I am a what? Jealous God, visiting the iniquity, the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that ate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandment. And we have shown clearly in, time, in, in previous um, studies that man was created for whose glory? For God's glory. And God said he will not share his glory with another and that is Isaiah 43 5 to 13. Now I want you to imagine something. Just imagine ladies you have started with your husband 
when there was nothing. I just want you to think about it. When there was nothing. As time passes, you achieve and are well established. Now, another lady out of nowhere, Sister Genus, comes and snatches away your husband. What? <laughs> huh? How would you feel? The truth. And the flip side of that is equally the same. For a man, he has brought up a damsel to wife, well established, for her to run off with another. That hurts. Huh? Then think about the God whom we should serve. Once by creation, he has made us out of nothing. And by redemption, he has brought us from the guttermost, taken us, washed us in his blood. And we still treat him the same way as in an adulterous relationship. Can you imagine how oh God feels? All right, I want us now to get an idea. We're going to look at some, some ways in which Through Bible history, there has been a transfer. You can call it a transfer, transferring the solemnity, if you so desire. After God had delivered Israel from Egypt via the plagues, the last one in particular, we can read about this in Exodus 12, 28 to 41. They saw and knew the power of God. When the plagues were off, where they falling, they saw and they, they, they wanted deliverance. Not, they, they, the Egyptian wanted deliverance from these plagues. And they saw what happened. They saw the false gods' deceptions as well. And they identify these false gods as having no power in comparison to the God of heaven. They also saw and witnessed the awesome manifestation of the power of God as the creator of heaven and earth. Then they saw the destruction of Pharaoh and his armies. In Exodus 14, 19, I think it is going to be important that we read this. Exodus 14, 19 to 31. It reads thus, And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar, the pillar, of the cloud went from before the face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptian and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud of darkness unto them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one come not near the other all night. What a glorious manifestation. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry, you see dry land, and the waters were divided. Verse 22, and the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea 
upon dry ground, and the waters were, were a wall unto them on the right hand and on the left. And the Egyptian pursued and went after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariot, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptian through the pillar of fire. What is this? Egyptian. And the Lord of hosts said unto Israel, sorry. To, to the pillar of fire. And it came to pass that in the morning, the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the to the host of the Egyptian through the pillar of fire of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptian. Verse 25. And took off their chariot's wheel, and they drove them heavily. So that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them, for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its strength when the morning appeared and the Egyptian fled against it and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea and the waters returned and covered the chariots the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them there remained not so much as one of them but the children of Israel walked upon what? Dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were all, were a wall unto them on the right hand and on the left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the, the hand of the Egyptian. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon what? The seashore, 31 and last. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did, where? Upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord, and believed the Lord, and his servant, Moses. So here you have it. They saw this. But something happened, a switch occurred. They saw that God is the one, the Lord is the one who delivered them from the Egyptians. So both Israel and the mixed multitude saw and knew that it was the creator God who delivered Israel. Then they did something else. But before I actually read that, Jump with me to Exodus 19, reading 3 to 4. Just reiterating God's position and how he treated the situation and what he has said. And Moses went up unto God. Verse 3 of Exodus 19, and Moses went up unto God. And the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus, thus, shall thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, he's reminding them, he has seen what I did unto the Egyptians. So this is evidence clearly stated. And oh, I bear you on eagle's wings and brought you unto who? Myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, very important, just as with the covenant relationship between husband and wife, and keep my commandment, then he shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. So here God is reminding them very importantly of what he 
did for them, right? Now, Exodus 32 now. Exodus 32, reading 1 to 4. Exodus 32, 1 to 4. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, are you there? So here you have it. There's a delay. Christ went to heaven all along. He was, he, he, what, when did he start his ministry? AD 27. Right? When was Stephen stoned? AD 31. Christ preached Christ preach for how long? Three and a half years. So here you have it. AD 27. Three and a half years. How many, how many that? That is 30 and a half years. So here you have it, same AD 31. Am I right? Christ ascend. Now, from AD 31 to where we are today, right? Just picture Moses. Moses went up into the mount, and the, the people expected that Moses should return very soon. He didn't. And as a result, they what? We haven't reached there as yet. We'll go there now. And for us, Christ returned to heaven, AD what? 31. And something is happening in our time since then. Watch the clip, the clip now, eh? Exodus 32, 1. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mound, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto them, Make us gods which shall go before us. Make us God. Make us God. Who can go before us? I won't know God, but that you want even God to go before me. What say you? For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we what not every time I see this what not I just think of the furniture what not the very first place we what not what is become of him and Aaron said unto him break off the golden earrings which are what of your wives of your sons and your daughters and bring them unto me and all the people broke break off their golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron and he received them at their hands and fashioned it with the graving tool after he had made it a molten calf and and they said these be thy God O Israel which brought thee up out of the land what a shift They have just seen the manifestation of God. And now is attributing that manifestation to an idol. Are we any different? We may scoff at that. But are we any different? Just a pictorial representation I want, I want, I'm going to share with you that you can have an idea as to what it looked like. Here you have the golden calf. You see it? Here you have a pictorial representation here of the golden calf being worshipped by Israel as well. Here you have another golden calf, but there is something interesting here. This one has a what? A sun disc on its head. Here you have another. So, let me just stop here. So the golden calf worship 
was sun worship. Did you see that? The golden calf worship was sun worship. Sun's day worship. Remember Constantine law on the venerable day of the sun. We must, you must remember the previous presentations that we have gone through because everything that I'm presenting is related. And especially Sound is gone. My check one, two, three. You hear now, Sister Lee? Yes, hear now. Mm -hmm. Right. I'll be sharing my screen again. I think I need. Are you seeing it? Yes. The history, a history of Christianity today, Christianity, 1976, page 67 to 68, historian Paul Johnson, detail. Some of this influence, Constantine, was almost certainly a, a myth, a myth, Mithriac and his triumphal ark built after his conversation testifies conversion. What did I say? Conversion, thank you. <laughs> conversion testifies to the sun god or the unconquered son. Constantine never, note this, Constantine never abandoned sun worship and kept, let me just get this over here, eh? and kept the sun on his coins. He made Sunday a day of rest, closing law courts, and forbidding all work except agricultural labor. So here you have an image, an idol set up in the place of God. Solemnity transfer. Everything that pertains to the Sabbath is now for Sunday, according to Constantine and his adherents. Ezekiel. I'm not, I'll just let it remain on the screen. Ezekiel 8 16. And he brought me into the inner courts of the Lord house, God's church. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about what? Five and twenty men with their backs towards the temple of the Lord, and their face towards where? And they worship what? towards the east. So here you have sun worship in God's church. So people can be worshiping the sun and not even knowing that they are worshiping the sun. Yes, brother George, hit that one last night. <laughs> Very serious. Now, you have 
this book here now to convert catechism, get it, I get I pronounce it, tell me what I this time. The converse catechism of the Catholic doctrine. By I don't use the word reverend, I just know man. Peter German. This is the entire entire catechism I have right here. Right? And the question again, a question is asked, and this is going to be important. By what authority did the church substitute Sunday for Saturday? You have it. The church substitutes Sunday for Saturday by the plentitude of that divine power which, which Jesus Christ is full of what her church. That is your argument. And in so doing, we're going to make a comparison between the Ten Commandments and in other words, the Protestant Bible, the King James Bible versus the Catholic Bible. He shall have no other gods before me. They keep that one. Here on the left, my left, I think your right. Right? Your left, you're looking on. My left should be your left, based on the screen. Right? Is the 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 Ten Commandments from the, 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 the King James summarized for viewing purposes and summarized for, from the Catholic on my right. He shall have no other gods before me. Both basically are the same. He shall not make yourself an idol. Right? You shall not create any graven image, you shall not bow down thyself nor serve them. That is totally removed from the Catholic version. He shall not misuse or take the Lord's name in vain. Where is that? That is, that is three on the, the, the thing they hear. And two in the Catholic. Remember the Sabbath day, keeping it holy. That is four from the King James. Catholic says what? The Lord's day. Lord's Day is Sunday according to them because the Catholic Church has transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. So, just jumping down, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. They take that one and split into the two so they can arrive at 10. Right? So, here you have it now. For the changing, for the changing of, or the transferring of the solemnity, no man can ever change what God has established. So, yes, you might see illustration or like it is done, but it can never be done away. Man cannot undo what God has said. Right? So here you have now prophecy. In Daniel chapter 7, 24, 25. It says, And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first. And he shall subdue three kings, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. That means it's a persecuting, wearing out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and law. Now, the Sabbath commandment is law, and it's the only commandment that relates to time. Right? Note, before the Roman Catholic Church, you had imperial or pagan rule, right? During the time of Christ, it was a Roman soldier who pierced the side of Christ. The Caesars 
are from the Roman Empire. Right? So Paul here, who was living in this time, Paul also writes his letters to the Romans. And if you go back to Daniel chapter 2, we have Babylon, Media, Persia, Greece, then Rome. So these are the four superpowers of the world. Then, but Paul in 2 Thessalonians, let us go there. And for those who are dealing with the 2200 days, they're getting snippets of the daily at work. 2 Thessalonians. 2, 1 to 12. Paul says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that he be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by words, nor by letter as from us, as that day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first. Now, I must pause here. Many theologians you have heard in times past saying that the disciples expected Christ to come in their time. That is not true. Paul is here letting you know clearly, as in this says, right? As for the day of Christ is and let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except a falling away first. So this falling away must precede Christ's second coming. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposed it and exalted, exalted himself above all that is called God. The Sabbath belongs to God. He claimed that he has transferred the solemnity. That you're bigger than God. God does something, you know, the good, you change it. You're bigger than God. I now have the seal. Note that word. Showing himself that he is God. Paul is saying, remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you, I told you these things. Verse 6. And now ye know that which holdeth, that he might re be revealed in his time. For the mystery, all years stating in his time now, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work. So that system that is going to exalt itself existed from the time of Paul. Only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall, yet future, consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of, of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of what? Satan. So here you know clearly that this man is the working of Satan. With all the power and the sign and line, line signs and line wonders, and with all the civil deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that what perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So, in other words, this information that you're getting is a life saving one. So, is the mark of the beast a salvific message? It is the most fearful message that is ever given to mortal, mortals. Any man, the Bible says, who worship the beast and receive his mark. It is dangerous. Nobody has ever um, um, faced such, such punishment. Hmm? Like they say, verse 11, And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. And we're going to explore, explore some of these lies. That they, verse 12, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had what? Pleasure in unrighteousness. When a woman is unfaithful to her husband, what is she having? 
is an appear pleasure in unrighteousness because it's not right doing and vice versa. How much time do I have? Your sound has disappeared. Well, it's gone. My check one, two, three. Very clear. We're hearing you now. Yes. All right. I'll be sharing my screen again. I found this very this this website very very informative, and uh, and very very simple. I'll be sharing simple in terms of what I want to uh, share with us. Again, screen. And when you are seeing it. Seeing. Right, so we're going uh, on a, a lineage journey. All right, Rome, the Roman Empire under Diocletian. We're going to see who he is. Right? I'm not going to read everything. Um, Europe in 300 AD was firmly under the control of the Roman Empire. And Christians in general were what? Hunted and persecuted through the empire. So here you have Christians being, and I'm going to pause here a little to show something. Here are you having the state, the state persecuting the church, right? Under Diocletian here, so you have a state power persecuting the church. Note that. Hunted and persecuting. From Nero to Diocletian, the persecution was relentless and unforgiving encompassing every conceivable form of torture from the stake to the Colosseum and, and Cyrus Maximus as a father for the what? The hungry beast and for the entertainment of the Roman mob. I believe if you check the Colosseum and the Olympics and all of these things, they have a, a close association writing about the impact of Christian martyrdom in the Roman Empire in 170, 197 AD, Tertullian wrote, the blood of martyrs is the seed of Christians. And so it was for every martyr, ma martyr burned at the stake a poor a score of new converts spring up in his place almost overnight. So anywhere there was a martyr, the gospel spread there. This is, um, this, as I said, this on the website is a collection of, of history. Of history. But this one, this is the part that I want us to pay attention. Diocletian rule, Diocletian's rule claimed the lives of more Christian than any other empire, empire em, emperors before him. Under him, the legal, listen to now, the legal rights of Christians were what? Rescinded. Let me ask a question. Throughout the world today, are we seeing the legal rights of Christians being rescinded? Yes. In the face and, of and, emergency. In cases of emergency and otherwise, as a matter of fact, pastors in many states throughout the United States cannot preach against homosexuality. They will be barred, chastised, and even imprisoned. Right? So look at this now. Again, it is the state here that is 
dictating and persecuting to the church, as we will read further. Under him, the legal rights of Christians were rescinded and they were forced to submit themselves to paganism on the pain of death. So for those who would oppose, they were basically persecuted to the point of death. For those who compromised, they went along with the state rule. So this is not a combination of church and state. I want us to understand. So what we are seeing at present happening in similar situation, it's not really church and state. It is the state dictating to the church and the church compromise. And we go into that when we go into Revelation 13 and the woman who rides the beast. All right, jumping ahead now. So you have Constantine rise to power and what? Conversion. Listen what happened now. So, find me. Let me try and see if I can get it a little bit. Revelation 13. And Revelation 17. Thank you very much. Right. So in, in looking at that, you're going to look at the two beast power in Revelation 13 and then move over to Revelation 17. Thank you very much. All right. So Constantine time conversion. And remember, we, we are looking at how all this happened. How the, 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 the solemnity was transferred. So you're getting an historical background to see what happened. Because remember, they claim that the Lord's Day Sunday was kept from apostolic times. So an understanding of this issue, so you saw the persecution of the church. And when you read through the history, even Paul, as his manner was in Acts chapter, I don't remember which we are in Acts, right? As his manner was, he went into the synagogue to preach. So Paul's manner and the apostles' manner in Bible times, they kept the seventh-day Sabbath. So it is a lie, a deflection from Rome that Christian kept. The Sabbath. It is after the Christian kept Sunday. It is a lie to a certain extent. It is in the age of compromise with the church here you now that Christians started keeping the Sabbath, the Sunday, as the Lord's Day. Right? So look what happens now. A constant rise, Constantine rise to power and, and conversion. He said, it was while he was in Britain at York that Constant pa Constantine passed out. Constantinus passed away and Constantine assumed his throne in 306 AD. Ambitious for absolute power over the empire, Constantine over time began to wrest power from other tetrarchs. tetrarchs. The two most formidable opponents that stood between him and his goals were Max, Maxentius, the son of Maximian, and Licinius. And it was during one of his campaign against Licinius that Constantine had a dream. In his dream, he was shown the symbol of a cross and was told, in this sign, conqueror. Was told, in this sign, conqueror. Conquer. This marked the conversion of Constantine to Christianity and the divergence of what? Of a movement that had what? To this point was what? So here you will see what happened. You saw the sign of the cross and claim it. Here. I'm 
in some dictation, dictation something will happen on the screen there. Yeah. All right, the, the, this, I'm, I'm picking up what the, this, this is about, the, the third sentence in this paragraph. It says, the first edict solemnized Sunday as the universal day of worship. This is AD, AD 321 and, and Constantine's universal Sunday law, bringing Christians and pagans unto a common ground. So, in other words, ecumenical, I'm going to deal with that. So this is ecumenism, basically, right? So here you have, he's bringing two different things together. In other words, he's going to take paganism and baptize it and call it Christian. All right? So bringing Christians and pagans unto a common ground. Up to this point, the church had kept the Bible Sabbath holy and pagans had venerated Sunday as the day of the sun, which they worship by enforcing Sunday worship. Constantine created a bridge between two religions that had not existed before. That bridge was never there before. He also issued an edict encouraging the regular consultation of Aristis or pagan priests who practice divination by reading the entries of animal powers. I get prophecy out of that, I don't know. Right? Constantine was a shrewd politician, and during his lifetime, he managed to strike a delicate balance between the rituals of paganism and the rights of Christianity. You saw the ship subtly comes in, everything that pertains to God is being shifted into paganism. He did it very subtly, right? By interwoving paganism with Christianity and offering Christians his protection and the promise of peace in exchange for compromise and their God. Over his lifetime, he guided and mingled paganism and Christianity to form what came to be known as the universal Roman, Roman church or the Roman Catholic church. Theodosius. And the gods. This is a lot. I think I'm going to leave out these. We can go into a lot about Iranism and all of those things. I'll just leave these out. All right? Let me stop here. I have five minutes left. Let me see if I can get five minutes. Now, I have shown you. Um, from the Encyclopedia of Catechism that they actually use Exodus 28, Exodus 28 to 11 pointing to Sunday, saying that the solemnity is transferred. And I've also showed you Exodus 31, verse 13, where God said he gave his Sabbath as a sign between us and them that we might know that he is the God who sanctifies us. They claim that right. So if it, if it is the God of heaven who sanctifies us, and they made a shift, transferred the solemnity. Who is it that sanctify you when you go to church on Sunday? Huh? Hope. All right. Now, let me share about my screen again. Uh, you next? That is the meaning, May 31, 1998, John Paul II, now deceased, issued this document. 
right? It's quite lengthy, which he, go, he went through and made some statements. And in this document, very, very powerful document, he outlined many things as it pertains to the Lord's day, how the Sabbath is to be kept, and all of these things in Dice the minute. So again, this is all the way, all the way to 1998. And during, well, before 1998, way back in history, as I said before, you have always had the popes making special appeal to the sacredness of so I'm not going to go into that. Then in uh, This one now. An item 237 on Ladata C. Have you ever heard about Ladata C? That is a document issued by um, Pope not Benedict. What is the name of the Pope? Francis. Pope Francis. Pope Francis. Right? I'm just going to make mention of um, item 237 what he, he, he reads it says on sunday our participation in the eucharist has special importance sunday like the jewish sabbath is meant to be a day which heals our relationship with god with ourselves and with the world i may change his speaking up sunday is the day of resurrection the first day of the new creation, the new week, Sunday. So here again, by even this, you can understand what is the first day of the week. And between the first, what comes what? The seventh, because we operate on a seventh day weekly cycle. So if you know the first, by default, you have to know the seventh. Right? Of the new creation, whose first fruits are of the Lord. I want to, to, to jump down a little. It is, in, it is also, it, it also proclaims man eternal rest in God. So when you read Hebrews chapter 4, you see both the seven day Sabbath rest and you saw God redemptive rest in Hebrews chapter 4. So yes, it is true, but he's taking this that applies to the seven day Sabbath unto the first year of the week. And it goes on and on and on. And in the interest of time, I leave that as well. Um I did a lot of lot of the sea already. That yeah, I wanted to end. I saw there's a Given you five minutes more. Coming back, coming back. Yes, I see exactly where I want to finish. I'm going to share this. So, looking at how the church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday, and they're doing it on an international basis now as well. So here you have, I found this quite interesting, ISO, which is the first day, ISO, which is the international standard here, right? Week one here, etc. cetera, we're friends, says, which is the first day of the week and which is week one of the year and they gave some things here so for this is iso 18 8601 so you can wikipedia it you can google it and this these are what we're going to find out so iso the international standard which is iso 806 
for represent, representation of dates and time. What did Daniel chapter 7 said the Antichrist will do? Think to change times and laws. So the law that pertains to the Sabbath is associated with time. Right? States that Sunday is the seventh and last day of the week. This method of representing dates and times and big, ambiguously was first published in 1988. So they, go, they go on and state now. Uh, can just read this part here. Uh, so the seventh day, which nearly, nearly corresponds to a quarter of a lunar month, has been established for thousands of years as part of the calendar cycle. Different religions and cultures have their own conventions about the significance of the day of the week and where wherein the week cycle is said to begin. Even in modern times, there are variations to accommodate specific need. For example, the BBC uses a week running from Saturday to Friday, for the mature local example, or programming planning their program weekly numbering following this convention. But you can take any day to be your time. What? To be yours. I can take any day to be myself. This is mine. But God says that the seventh day is his. You cannot take the day that you designate to be your Sabbath and impose it on you. But God, who creates, tells us what he requires of his people who choose to obey him. He, he tells us what his requirements are concerning that. So here you have them going off in it. However, it is clearly useful to adopt a common standard for use in transaction between organization and in materials intended for general public. So, organizations, things that pertain to the public, the Sabbath you're going to find is going to be hard, the seven day Sabbath is going to be hard to keep. Such a standard was introduced by the International Organization for Standardization in 1975. Many of us were not born at that time, but the plans are way in advance. For commercial purposes, for accounting, you name it. So, although the answer to the question, which is the first day of the week, depends on the context. The answer to that question, which day of the week is first, is clearly Monday. So the ISO standard, you quote it now. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday becomes the seventh day. And it is a universal standard. No, as far back as when? 1975. Now, again, I'm going to show you the idolatrous practices that is now parading as something sacred. Right? The God who is thus represented as Sunday. I'm showing you. So that's briefly. Here we see Pope John Paul, and he is holding in his honor. You're not seeing it? I didn't share it. Oh, sorry. Is 
So here you have Pope John Paul II holding up what is known as a monstrance. In this monstrance, which represents the sunburst dial here, the wafer or the communion bread is placed inside here. Right? I won't get the time to actually go in all of these. These are after additional pictorial representation. Right? But interestingly, the monstrance is stored in something. So all these are related. That is the way for monstrance is, is stored in a casket. and his deep pagan sun worship. So what is masquerading as Christianity and Christ is actually pagan to the church. And it is this institution that the world, the world follows. They have transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. This transition has happened. The reason why it's not enforced now is because that power has received a deadly wound. And when this wound is restored, then absolute power occurs. We break here until another presentation. At another. I hope you are blessed. Let us pray. Our oh, Father, who art in heaven, high and holy are you, Lord. Lord, help each and every one of us. not to give our allegiance to an idol. And we know, Lord, that disguised behind these idols is Satan. who coveted worship when he was in heaven. Help us, Lord, that we will worship no creature, but only the creator of heaven and earth. And this your holy Sabbath, Lord, we pray that you will wash us, sanctify us, and make us clean that indeed our worship today will be totally accepted by you hear and answer a prayer again we ask in jesus name amen Mic check. Okay, thank you so much um, for such a timely message. I am sure. All right. So we're going to break for lunch, but before we do, we're going to sing a few and close off in prayer. Um, 
Nobody ever hear me say that shot. Zoom. Am I being heard on Zoom? Clear. In number eight. We're going to stand and sing him number eight. There's a note again. But it's in the wrong volume. Yes. Yeah. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. He chastens and hastens his will to make known the wicked oppressing now cease from distressing. Sing praises to his name, he forgets not his own. Be silence to guide us, our God with us joining, ordaining, maintaining his kingdom divine. So from the beginning, the fight we were winning, the Lord was at our side, all glory be thine. We all do extol thee, thou leader triumphant, and pray that thou still our defender wilt be. Let thy congregation embrace tribulation. Thy name be ever praised, O Lord, make us free. Amen. Pray and close off this segment. Our most righteous and heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for all that was said and done, all the different presentations. I pray that it will manifest in our hearts and that we will remember it and that we will meditate upon your words, that it will not return unto you void. I pray also for the remainder of the evening, remainder of the day, for the presenters who will continue this evening, that you will guide each and every mind and our hearts. And as we break for lunch, that you will bless the food, that there will be enough food for each and every person. And that as we have feasted upon your spiritual food, that we will also feast on the physical food that will be nourishing to our bodies give us strength so your son jesus precious name i pray amen all right brethren we close we break for lunch and we will resume at three with our sanctuary message by brother balls right. have a good lunch everyone and remember, it's the Sabbath. We don't overeat. Okay. <laughs>